Let me make sure that this is all working properly. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this next installment of the Society of American Archivists Records Management Roundtable Virtual Hangout Series. Uh, we're glad that you could join us today uh, and watch or watch when it's convenient for you at a later time. Um, these will all be made available on the, the Roundtable's YouTube page. Uh, so my name is Beth Cron, and I'm chair of the Records Management Roundtable. And I'm joined today by Christy Peterson, who's uh, vice chair of the Roundtable. So we're really excited for our presentation today and to have the opportunity to share with all of you, um, share with the community on this important project. Um, so we're joined today by Peter Chan, who's the digital archivist in the Department of Special Collections and University Archives at Stanford University and is a member of GameZip, and is the project manager for EPAD. And also by Josh Schneider, he's the assistant university archivist in the Department of Special Collections and University Archives at Stanford University, and is community manager for EPAD. So thank you both very much for joining us today. Uh, so EPAD is a software package that was developed by Stanford University's Special Collections and University Archives uh, that supports archival processes around appraisal, ingest, processing, discovery, and delivery of email archives. So today, Josh and Peter will be providing us an overview of their, uh, their current work, and then we'll have uh, plenty of time for your questions. Um, so as you all know, the, the management and the processing of email is a challenge that's faced by most archivists and records managers, and so we wanted to have another hangout on this topic. Uh, in case you missed it, you can watch the March Hangout um, on the topic of processing capstone email using predictive coding um, that we did with uh, the folks at University of Illinois. And that's available on the Records Management Roundtable YouTube page. Uh, so we'll link to that and, and include all the other links that were mentioned today in a summary blog post on the schedule. So you can look for that. Uh, so if you have any questions today, there are a few ways to ask. Um, you can ask on Twitter using the S-A-A-R-M-R-T hashtag, and we'll be watching that. You can also leave a comment on YouTube, and we can see them there. Or you could leave a comment on the blog page on the schedule, and we could, we could see those there. And if all those methods don't work for you, you can also just send me an email at uh, bethany.cron, C-R-O-N, at nara.gov. So we'll go ahead and get started. So we have uh, plenty of time for Peter and Josh. And th thank you once again for being with us here today. Um, we'll start with an overview of the project. And you can provide uh, a mini demo if you like. And then we can dive into the, the moderated question and answer session. So over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Beth and Christy. And thank you to the SAA Records Management Roundtable for hosting us today. Um, as Beth mentioned, we're going to give you an overview of the project, uh, and then uh, Peter's going to go into a demo of the software, and then we should have plenty of time afterwards uh, for a discussion. So, so EPAD is an open source, freely downloadable software package that uses machine learning and natural language processing to support the appraisal, processing, discovery, and delivery of email archives. Since its development in the 1960s, emails become a durable form of communication. Along with social networking tools, emails replace traditional correspondence as evidence of people's life activities and business transactions. Here we go. Our reliance on and daily use of email over the past 40 years has developed rich archival material with the secondary benefit of recording social networks and the header information of senders and recipients. You may recognize some of the folks here for being in the news recently for their email. Uh, the importance of the email corpora of writers and public figures like these has guided efforts in improving access to email collections. But if email held by archival repositories is so interesting and so ubiquitous, why aren't more researchers using it? Well, it turns out institutions find it really difficult to provide access to email um, for a couple of reasons. One's that email can potentially include confidential information that donors and archives are loath to share without extensive screening. 
And the second is that these email archives can be in the hundreds of thousands or even millions of messages, uh, greatly compounding the problem. So we created EPAD to help automate some of these processes to make it easier for institutions to provide access to email and for researchers to discover and use it. The first major release came out last June after two years of NHPRC funding. And this last November, with IMLS funding, we began three additional years of development, which we call EPAD Phase 2. In the second phase of development, we plan to greatly expand the program's scalability, usability, and feature set. So what is EPAD? EPAD is Java-based software packaged for Mac and Windows that runs in Chrome and Firefox browsers. It consists of four modules that build on each other, but can be run independently depending on the need. And in a couple of minutes, Peter's going to talk you through uh, each of those demos, each of those modules. One of the main ways that EPAD facilitates access to the email is by incorporating natural language processing, which helps provide users with new ways to browse and visualize the archive. EPAD relies on a custom natural language processing engine to identify and index persons, organizations, and locations contained in the email archive. Our developers experimented with the Stanford NLP and the Apache Open NLP, but they decided for several reasons to instead explore the creation of their own NLP, which also takes into account the address book for the email account. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Peter, who's going to show you a nice uh, demo of the project. So, uh, because this, uh, yeah, there's a, a lag um, in showing the screen in YouTube. So let's wait a little bit, and then uh, we can dive into the demo. So this screen, OK, so uh, as Josh mentioned, we have four modules. The appraisal module is designed for the donor to use, basically. So say uh, the donor want when they want to you know, donate the email, they want to screen out you know uh, something. But in the beginning, you know, uh, we uh, need to fill in some information for EPAD to take in the archives. So we are demoing the archive for Robert Quigley. So here, you know, people just enter the name and then the primary email address and then. Uh, for quickly, we have uh, inbox uh, messages in inbox format, so we can just go to read the inbox files. If a, any donor who have an email account in Gmail, Hotmail, uh, Yahoo Mail, all those uh, IMAP email, they can just enter the email address and password, and EPAP will go to the server and grab the email and download the uh, messages to the local computer. So after we do that, then uh, here is the next page. So I'm waiting a little bit to uh, make sure the YouTube screen uh, refresh the correct uh, screen. So here, you know, it is a live uh, uh, account for Robert Quigley. All together, we have about 50,000 email messages. And then uh, I want to show you one thing. As I mentioned before, people are you know, interested to screen out the sensitive messages that are contained in their email archives. Uh, remember last year the, or the year before when Jeff Bush uh, published his email uh, um, messages when you know, he was the governor of uh, Florida State. So a few days later, he had to take it down. Because people, you know, are talking about the email message contain the social security numbers. So here in EPAD, we have one tab called sensitive message. When I click that tab, basically what this is a uh, tab doing uh, is doing for us is a regular expression search. We search for social security number, credit card number, and we have a configuration file. You can add other regular expression you think is appropriate. So let me show you. Here is the second message. And Robert quickly sent an email to other people, you know, talking about contract. And then here, the highlighting part is he mentioned, OK, my social security number is 
whatever. But since Robert Quigley is already died, so it's okay, you know, for me to show you the social security number. Uh, so this is, you know, one thing uh, what we can do. So say this one, uh, when we know, okay, this if this social security number is for some people is still alive, then, you know, we should block it. Say, for example, we on the upper left-hand corner, we have a few icons. The first one is do not transfer. The second one is transfer with restriction. The third one is revealed. So, for example, this one, maybe we decide we do not want to transfer this message. I just click this, and then uh, if you can see it, the color of the icon turn from gray to blue. So this signifies that this message is marked as do not transfer. And I can go to the export tab. Now you can see I have one message. Uh, I'm waiting for the YouTube screen to, to refresh it. Um, So, okay, now you can see there's one message which I just flag as do not transfer. So, and if you mark more, you know, messages as do not transfer, you list it here. So, you know, in that way we can, you know, use EPAD to screen out uh, some sensitive message. And so now actually, uh, as we mentioned, you know, the EPAD has four modules. Uh, we, since we don't have time to demo all the functions for each module, uh, I assume now we, we act as an uh, archivist. So the archivists, what they want to do is more or less the same. Archivists also want to screen out sensitive messages that, you know, uh, to protect the donors' privacy or there are some messages that we maybe we need to restrict for certain years. And EPAD has a function called lexicon search. So on the lower uh, tab, so there's a one called lexicon search. Now I click into the lexicon search, and uh, later you will see there's a lexicon called sensitive. So in that sensitive lexicon, let's go to see what is a uh, lexicon. So basically, a lexicon is a category of words. Say we have a lexicon containing four categories. One is job, the other is student, the other health, and then personal. Under students, we have grade, education record, transcript, students number. All this, actually, we want to screen out messages containing all those keywords. Basically, EPAD is helping you to save your search in a more organized way and EPAD ship standard with a sensitive lexicon, which you can edit. We show you the four uh, category. You can add more category, and then inside each category, we have words uh, in those categories. You can edit it, you know, you can add or delete words that you think is appropriate or not appropriate. And as you can see, this is the result of the search. In the student category, actually we have 736 messages that, you know, with uh, containing some keywords that we define in the lexicon category. So here, as you can see, you know, we have a message uh, having the term grading. So since, you know, uh, we need to be very careful in uh, faculty paper that if there's any student grading, we should not release it out. So maybe that one, we should also mark it as do not transfer. So when it is do not transfer, we won't transfer it to the discovery module or our delivery module. So um, this is what I, I want to talk about, you know, for the processing module, basically, you know, the archivists want to screen out 
uh, message that uh, contains sensitive information. And the other thing, after we do that, then EPAD will export the whole email archive to two modules. One is discovery module, one is delivery module. Delivery module is designed for people to uh, come to our reading room and then see the email archives. Discovery module is designed for people to put the uh, archive in a web server so that people who have a, a browser can see the message. Here, let me show you uh, our live, you know, epad.stanford.edu is our live site. Now we have one email uh, corpus in that environment. And so, so let me go back and uh, OK. So in this environment, you can see, you know, we have the email archive of Robert Quigley. You see, we have, you know, about 50,000 message, and then we have four tabs. Uh, one is what we call a correspondence tab. Correspondent is uh, everyone who is in the two from CC field. So you can see we have a list of uh, all those people, Robert Quigley, Bruce Jackson, and you can do a browse. So here, uh, all together, there's about 23,000, 24,000 entries. So uh, you can browse, you know, whatever names you think is interesting. You know, if you have someone in mind that you want to search, of course, you can type in uh, the search, the search term in the search field. And the other one is uh, what uh, George mentioned is EPAD actually take advantage of one uh, computer science technique called entity extraction. We extract all the persons, organization, locations mentioned in the message inside each message. So it's not the two from CC field, it's the person, any person mentioned in the message itself. So for persons, we have 50 something thousand uh, personal name mentioned in the message. But bear in mind that this is you know, generated by some computer algorithm. So we should not expect it to be 100% correct. But as you can see, you know, in that screen is, uh, so I'm waiting for it to refresh. So uh, let me screw it up a little bit. So as you can see, all this, uh, you know, uh, San Francisco, of course, is not named. So as I mentioned before, uh, there are some, uh, you know, uh, entity extraction is a still uh, something that is not 100% correct. <laughs> so, but, you know, all the way, when I scroll down, you can see all the names, which is pretty you know, much all personal names. So the same for organization and location. So this is what the uh, EPAD used, you know, we use entity extraction to provide you with all these names automatically. And uh, so I think this is uh, compared to what we have before. Before we have EPAD, you know, we, we put in our finding aids telling people that we have uh, e uh, Robert Quigley's email archive containing 50,000 email message. The day range is from whatever day to whatever day. If you are interested, please come to Stanford. Now, you know, in a web environment, you can browse the collection, you can do a search, and, uh, and the browse is a very rich browsing rather than just a few subject heading or a few uh, personal names. We have thousands of names, thousands of location, and uh, organization you can uh, browse. One other features I want to show you is uh, under the search uh, tab, so we'll wait a little bit until the uh, YouTube screen uh, refresh. So in the search, we have a regular search. In the search query, you can type in, say, I want to search uh, 
the name uh, or so any message contain ozen. So I can do just a search on that and then uh, the system will tell you okay they are loading 1260 message containing the name ozen. And uh, we'll wait a little bit and then uh, we'll see when this uh, YouTube screen refresh, you will see the uh, message. One thing very important is when you see this message, we have many dot, 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 dot. <laughs> because now we are in a web environment. Everyone with a web browser can you know, see that email archive. So we think that with a balance of uh, copyright and privacy and, and the uh, balance against the information we provide to researchers, we only e expose all the extracted entity, which is the personal name, organizational name, or and uh, location names. So you will see dot, 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 and then OSEN highlighted because we search the term OSEN. So, uh, we think you know it will be very useful for the researcher. You know, you give researcher more information before they can decide whether they want to come to the Stanford Reading Room to read the email messages. There's another uh, search function I want to show you. Is uh, we have a function called Query Generator. So. Uh, we have to wait a little bit until the YouTube screen uh, refresh. So as you can see here, query generator is one from What is this? So let me show you something. I'm going to a wiki page. Robert Quigley belonged to a group called Back Mountain Poets. So uh, OK, now the, the screen is refreshed already. In the Back Mountains Poet Wiki entry, we will see a list of people that belong to that group. If I'm interested to see whether you know uh, all the names mentioned here, do they correspond to Robert Quigley? You know, do they have messages in the uh, Robert Quigley email message? Then we can you know type in one by one. But let me show you something. I just cut and paste a whole paragraph. And then I highlight it, copy it, and then I go back to EPAD. And now I'm in the query generator screen. I just paste the whole paragraph in that box. OK, and then I submit the search for the whole paragraph. And what EPAD is doing is, uh, EPAD is doing a first step is entity extraction. It's extracting all the names here in that paragraph. The second thing that EPAD do is submit all the extract entity as a query, and then search whether that name uh, is uh, has any hits in the um, email archives. So all the one with highlight yellow highlight is uh, we have uh, entry. So if I click any one of them, you can see you know uh, EPAD will tell you the first one here we have. We have 12 messages that you know uh, contain that name. So I think it is a you know very convenient uh, functions that allow people to cut and paste a you know a, a big uh, chunk of text and then do a search uh, inside this environment. So this is we believe with all this function you know it will help researcher to give them as much information as possible. Uh, also, 
protecting, you know, we, we don't violate copyright and then pro, uh, make sure we, we are not exposing all the messages uh, in the web. But on the other hand, people, uh, the researcher have more information to decide whether they want to spend the time and money fine to Stanford, you know, come to our reading room to read the email message. Now, assume, you know, the a researcher decide to come to the reading room. So, basically, he will say, see more or less the same screen as what we see in the appraisal processing uh, module. Uh, say, for example, a researcher now want to, uh, of course, he can do a search. You know, if People know exactly what they want to do. They can do full text search. We limited the search. You know, the researcher can limit the search to subject field. Uh, original text is uh, in the email message. When you reply, they are uh, called a message. So if you say you want to just search the original text, then we won't search the called message. Uh, and then we have you know email direction is uh, in coming or outgoing, in, you can specify the day range as well. So this is what uh, we assume people know exactly what they want to find. But as uh, uh, we mentioned, you know, some people who are not very sure, then they can search by uh, correspondence, person, organization, locations. One other function which uh, is we think is very important is for example, if a researcher wants to see the images attached in the email message, imagine you are in a Gmail environment or an Outlook environment. If I want to see the messages, you have to go to that particular email message and then open the message and you uh, will see the email attachment. In ePad, we have an image attachment tab. When I click that image attachment tab, uh, we have to wait a little bit uh, for the screen to refresh in the YouTube uh, screen. So what EPAD is doing is EPAD actually gather all the images in one place. So I can browse all the message, all the image attachment in this one location. So. Uh, so it's refreshing. Okay, as you can see, I can you know uh, refresh. You know, just scroll and then browse on all the message. If I'm interested in a particular message, say I just click on one message. I think that mes uh, that image is what I'm interested in. So EPAD actually, you know, the next step is EPAD can bring you to that message. Now, as you can see in the bottom, actually, you know, the uh, image is attached, you know, within that uh, message. So I think that uh, function actually will be very, very useful for people who are interested in, you know, browsing all the image attachment. And I think one final thing I want to show you is uh, we. I'm showing you some uh, a development, a beta uh, program that uh, we uh, Josh mentioned. We are now in addition to doing entity extraction on the person, organization, and location name. We are doing what we call a fine type entity extraction. We are extracting much more uh, entities. So here you can say you can see here I have a uh, entity or award. So when I click on award, what uh, you will see is we are basically we are making use of the award mentioned in uh, listed in the wiki page. So and here you can see a list of all the award that 
are mentioned in the uh, Robert Quigley email archives. And uh, there's a score of one, meaning that you know it's, it's an exact match. Nobel Prize is there's a wiki page in uh, wik, uh, there's a wiki uh, page about Nobel Prize, so the score is one. So EPAD not only you know just do a exact match of the name, EPAD also guess whether uh, you know a certain name is an award or not. You can see here I have a name called Genius Award. So Genius Award may uh, most likely we won't have a wiki page. So in the uh, in wiki that talk about Genius Award, but uh, in EPAD algorithm, we guess that is an award. So we also show that in uh, as an extract entity, and you can see the score is zero point two zero three, which means is not uh, something that is uh, there's a, a entry in the wiki page. So and we think that uh, entity extraction, that fine type entity is very powerful for people who are not uh, very familiar with, you know, uh, who, who don't know exactly what they want to, to find. So they can browse not only the person, organization, location, they can you know, browse many other entity types. So I think I will just stop here first and then uh, George will take you uh, to a few more screen and then we can uh, go to question and answers. So we're dealing a bit with the YouTube lag, so please forgive us to, to catch up. OK, so uh, as we mentioned, uh, we began work on phase two last November. Uh, there are five to six major releases scheduled over the next three years, including the first scheduled uh, for this June. So uh, as we approach each release, we're going to uh, we're already reviewing uh, our roadmap and all of the goals we have in mind with our partners. And for each upcoming release, uh, we're putting those goals up on GitHub, um, where anybody can view them and also provide feedback. Um, Peter showed you that fine grains NER. We're really excited about that. Um, other than awards, we also have events, diseases, and about 20 other categories. But we think this is a, another area in which uh, we can really benefit from user feedback. So we're, we're really looking forward, once this gets rolled out, uh, to hear how people are using it and if there are other uses that they have in mind, other categories, uh, we're looking forward to hearing more about that. We have themes for each of those major releases, uh, the five to six major releases, including those listed here. Uh, these are major themes, then underneath each of these, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we're, we're hoping to accomplish uh, over the next two and a half years. And we're also growing our community of users uh, by reaching out throughout the international LAM community for users to test the software and work with us to make sure it meets broad community needs. Um, so uh, of interest potentially to the records management roundtable folks, um, we have a uh, web uh, conference for government repositories that we'll be uh, scheduling later this year. Uh, we're also planning to hold a, a hackathon, so since this is an open source uh, project, everybody can sort of weigh in and take it apart and, and see um, how it might be more useful for them. Um, we also try to collect uh, user stories and uh, use cases from our users. We have user forums available online. Uh, we're now forming a Lexicon working group that should be having its first meeting soon. So Peter showed you that Lexicon, uh, which can be used to help uh, identify sensitive information. Um, it can also be used for a variety of other purposes, uh, and we're, we're excited to um, explore that a bit more. Um, and of course, it's as open software, um, it's all available on GitHub for, for people to uh, fork and adapt for their own purposes. Um, I would be a very bad community manager if I didn't also mention uh, that we're on Twitter, and I, I hope you'll follow us at e underscore pad. For, uh, that's where we'll 
uh, announce all the latest releases and webinars and conferences. Um, and of course, you can download the software online, try it out yourself. Um, everything can be accessed through our website. If you just Google EPAD, it should be one of the top hits. Um, and there's a user guide available to help you. Um, so this is what that website looks like, uh, sort of a, a community hub. So that's it in terms of slides. I think I'll just wait a second for, uh, for the YouTube to, to catch up a second. Um, but at this point, we're thrilled to turn it back over to Beth and Christy. Um, we're happy to, to talk with you guys more, hear your feedback. Uh, we hope it looks like an exciting project to you, and, and we really love to hear more from you. Thanks, guys. That was great. Yeah, um, thank you. So I have questions, and I've gotten a couple of questions over Twitter as well. Beth, do you want me to start, or do you want to start? Yeah, why don't you start with the ones you got? Okay. So one of the questions we got over Twitter um, was asking about uh, digital preservation and how this might work into a digital preservation workflow. And I, I saw that that's on your roadmap um, for delivery over or development over the next two and a half years. But um, is there? Could you possibly speak a little bit to what your your plans are, what your thoughts are for developing that that area? Yes. I think there's a few uh, areas that we are in. One thing is, of course, the uh, normalized file format. You know, uh, some people suggest in the past that uh, they will convert emails to XML, but there are other opinions as well. People, some people now, you know, if you just uh, convert it to XML, then you don't have a software that can, you know, do uh, read all those uh, email message in XML format. So people now, some of them, you know, use uh, Mbox as a persuasion format. Some of them use EML. So we will explore all those options, and then you know we will you know, try to make some recommendation. The other thing is, uh, in EPAD, actually, you know, if people are using EPAD to uh, ingest all those uh, email message, then we have another issue of preserving EPAD as a software. <laughs> So we are also thinking about, you know, preserving EPAD in a virtual uh, machine environment. So this is another area we want to look into. The third thing, actually, we, we are thinking about is also regarding virtual machines. Is some people may want to preserve uh, the email message in their original format with their original software. Say it's an Outlook. They may want to see the email message in the Outlook software. So that can be done by you know, preserving the Outlook software together with the message in a virtual machine environment. So all those areas are you know, what we are you know, trying to uh, look into details in uh, the digital preservation phase. OK, thank you. Um, I think that'll be some really, it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see where you guys go with that. Um, so I had a question. We are the Records Management Roundtable, um, and it's uh, clear the EPAD is coming from the, the manuscripts tradition, working with kind of uh, individual manuscripts. I'm wondering if any of your partners have discussed or if anybody has talked about using this software um, for institutional re records management type uh, applications. So. Um I can speak uh, a little bit to that. Um, so another hat I wear is in the, the university archives, and we do get um, institutional email. Um, it's, it's, in the past, um, it's been the email of individuals um, who serve an administrative role, right? So in that case, we could take in their email and process it the same way as, as we've been doing here. Um, EPAD wasn't originally intended as, as records management software, per se, though it does include a lot of appraisal functionality. Um, we are going to explore annotation management. Um, so you may have seen next to some of the actions that you could take um, with the messages, the restrict, do not transfer, or indicate that you reviewed the message. There was a free text um, field where you can uh, type in a message, and those uh, annotations would, would export. Um, when you export uh, to the next phase or you export to, to an inbox file. Um, we do want to make sure that uh, we can also include some machine-readable uh, fields there so that if an archivist wanted to um, indicate that um, a certain message or a certain group of messages 
um, should be restricted according to a certain policy at the institution, um, that they could do that. So that's something that we'll be exploring more in, in that annotation management phase. Um, but we are interested, especially when we speak with um, government uh, repositories more directly um, on the web conference that I mentioned earlier, we are interested in hearing more how we could um, best suit, uh, line up with other pathways that records managers are used to, and if there are modifications that we can make to the software. We're already talking about um, improving um, the reporting and uh, potentially incorporating an audit trail, um, but if there's other functionalities that we can include that would make the software more useful for people, of course, we're, we're interested in hearing more feedback. Great, thank you. Um, so another question that came from Twitter. Um, someone asking, uh, how difficult would it be to add other text indexable files to this? So for example, a folder of born digital con uh, content. Um, you know, how difficult uh, would it be to, to expand this functionality to appraise and browse other types of born digital content? So uh, this is not in the scope of the EPEP project. So, but uh, anyway, we think this is an important thing. Uh, so uh, we are also exploring another grant uh, uh, proposal on separate the entity extraction uh, engine from EPEP and then uh, make it uh, what we call an entity extraction as a service. People can send the text to the web service, and then we can return the extracted entity. So this is something we have in mind for, uh, you know, boarding it to all other uh, file types. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so looking at it as an archivist, well, Beth, do you have any questions? I could just sit here and ask questions all day. <laughs> Uh, we did have a couple more that came in with the SAA RMRT hashtag. Okay. Um, can you tell us uh, more about the current future of the visual visualization tools? So the current tools are available and, and what you're planning for visual visualization? So currently we are using the D3 library for our visualization. And uh, the coming phrase we are trying to incorporate Gatsby so social networks. So and I I think uh, for visualization uh, we need to be very careful on uh, uh, because it's so broad <laughs> and uh, and if someone you know if they have some recommendation because say D three library they have so many uh, different types of visualization uh, you know it's not that difficult to uh, incorporate any one of those, but uh, we need to make sure those uh, visualization uh, do give values to uh, research. Yeah. So let me maybe show you one uh, visualization that uh, we have here. So uh, because it's uh, in YouTube, you you have to wait a little bit to. Uh, to see it refresh. So let me show you. So what you uh, are seeing now is a uh, sentiment analysis. <laughs> we use a sentiment lexicon to analyze Robert Quigley's email. Some of the sentiment include happy, love, uh, sad, all those words. And then each color bar you know, represents one category. So this is uh, uh, you know, one of the visualization that we have uh, in EPAD right now. So in the interest of time, we didn't um, 
show all the different areas where uh, a lot of the lists of browsing tables that you could look at, uh, you could also view as a visualization. So depending on uh, how somebody best ingests information or the type of information they're looking at, we do incorporate some of these types of visualizations. But as Peter mentioned, uh, the D3 library is so large that we're really looking for feedback um, in order to know which direction, if somebody wants to see a certain type of visualization, um, what we might include. But certainly the, the network visualization stuff that uh, is included as part of this grant, we're really excited about. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I think I have one more, Christy, so I'll go ahead and ask that. Um, are there plans to provide a Linux distribution of EPAD and command line tools? Uh, not in our roadmap. Uh, yeah, because uh, we would like to concentrate on the uh, majority of the users uh, at this moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, Christy, did you have any other questions? Uh, one thing I want to add is uh, basically EPAD is a Java-based uh, platform. <laughs> so, you know, if people are using Linux, most of them are more technical savvy. They can just download Linux and you know download EPAD, and they may have just to change a little bit in order to run in Linux environment. So, so uh, another question I had: um, looking at the the entity extractions, um, the the next thing. Um, it, it reminded me of, of some work that I've done in the past working in OpenRefine with data, and they have some entity ins extraction plugins there. But it always requires tons of cleanup. Um, and have you guys given any thought to incorporating some, some tools that would allow um, kind of cleanup? So um, Sue and Susan B. Anthony, for example, would, would, could be um, identified as the same person, um, whereas you know, the entity extraction might, might identify them as separate ones. Well, this is also you know roadmap, and uh, but bear in mind that you know uh, it also takes time for for yes. people to do all those cleanup. And one of the beauty of uh, EPAD is people can uh, run the uh, software. Say Robert quickly, we have fifty thousand email message in two hours. We have uh, the result I show you. So without any cleanup, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah. So, but the still, you know, I, I uh, the combining uh, those entities, you know, to do cleanup is one of uh, our enhancements. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome to see um, something like open, you know, the the functionality of like open or fine mixed in there, get really fancy. Um, Beth, did you have back to you? Do you do you want to have a, an, any more questions? Well, sure. I was wondering, so you're starting to collect uh, use cases and user stories. I was wondering if you had any stories about um, records managers using EPAD or archivist records managers as often. What a lot of members have both job, job titles, but if you have any examples that you could share today. Well, one thing is uh, we also want to concentrate on the archival aspect rather than the records management. Aspect because there are many, uh, there are you know, at least quite a few uh, record management software, and uh, since you know we what we we are more interested to do uh, since our resources is very limited, so we want to uh, do something that you know that is not exist in the field, mm -hmm. and uh, say the records management one of the key records management function is you know defining the retention period all those. Uh, and have very strong uh, um, backup function or you know uh, all this. We think there are other tools which which uh, people can uh, use. So we will try to concentrate our effort to something that uh, other people don't uh, offer. You know, I don't see people you know in the records management. They don't have uh, all those. Uh, entity extraction, image attachment, lexicon attachment, you know, all this is not exist in uh, other tools. That's why we want to uh, explore more on, you know, tools that are not exist at this moment. 
I, I think that, um, well, I myself and, and I think a lot of our members um, probably find themselves in similar situations to Josh there where, you know, you wear multiple hats, one of which is, is a university or college archives. Um, so I think with, with that kind of partner in on the project, um, it's likely that uh, a lot of our, our members would find this really useful, I think. I, I will mention that um, one thing that was really important for us to do this round um, in EPAD phase two was was to try to reach outside of maybe some of the more traditional communities for this project. Make sure we don't just have um, academic partners, um, that we really bring in a lot of folks from different types of repositories. So that's one of the reasons why we also uh, partnered with uh, Metro, the Metropolitan New York Library Council, who represents hundreds of, of different types of institutions. And um, that's been really great for the project to bring in that, that um, broader uh, range of feedback. Um, and of course, as Peter mentioned, with, with limited funding, we've needed to make a lot of um, difficult decisions about where to focus our energies. Um, but we're very interested in hearing more from records managers, especially those who, who might be or wear multiple hats, like you say, um, about what we could do to improve the software um, to make it more helpful for them, too. Yeah, one other thing I want to add is uh, if uh, please contribute to our use case and then uh, you know user stories, and we can gather all this, and maybe in our second and you know, subsequent uh, grant proposal, we can it is a very natural extension of EPAD. So, but uh, since in this round we, uh, as we say, you know, we have limited resources, but. Uh, we are preparing, you know, if there are enough uh, requests from uh, the field, then definitely I think funding agency will be interested to fund us to expand EPAD to records management. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right, did, uh, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? I don't think we have any more questions that have come in. No. I'm just really excited to see where you guys go with this. Um, and to get my hands on it, frankly. <laughs> so um, you guys gave it to us before, but um, as we're closing out, what would be the best way for people to get in touch with you if they do have ideas or if they would like to um, find out more or partner with you? So um, we have several different ways in which you can learn more about the project or contact us, all of which should be accessible from our EPAD project page. Of course, you can always uh, just get in touch with Peter, Glenn, or I um, if you see us at a conference or you run into us. But um, there, there's lots of different ways. And as Peter mentioned, we're always looking to, to expand our, our user base. Um, following us on Twitter is probably the, the easiest way. We also have a mailing list with periodic updates. Um, and of course, uh, we have our, our user guide, user forums. Uh, there's different forms to submitting uh, user stories and use cases online. Um, it's really core to this, this phase of development to grow the community and to make sure that uh, the software really represents as, as rich of a demographic um, across uh, different repository types as we can. So really feel like uh, you're included in this community um, and look online or contact us for uh, more ways to join. Excellent. Thank you, guys. No excuse not to participate. Well, thank yeah, you so much, uh, Beth and Christy, and, and thank you again to the Record Management Roundtable. We had a great time, and um, thank you very much also for the discussions and feedback. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.